Hi there fellow guitarists, Josh Rogers here. Welcome to the first tutorial for what is possibly the most famous classical guitar piece of all time. It's Recuerdos de la Alhambra or Memories of the Alhambra by Francisco Trega. I think the piece itself is possibly the most well-known example of the tremolo technique which is this kind of technique here. We hear a series of notes repeating themselves over and over again constantly. Just a technical thing before we jump in and start to learn this piece note by note. When I was taught how to do a tremolo, one of the things that my teacher used to impress upon me was that you should treat the thumb exactly as if it was one of the fingers. So one of the ideas to aim for is for all of your four notes to sound the same. I think a lot of people are under the mistaken impression that tremolo is all about speed. Whilst that is true to a certain degree, one of the other important facets of tremolo technique is actually having the articulation even so that one note isn't any louder than the others. Sometimes we're a little bit heavy with the thumb like and that's okay when you're in the actual context of the song but from a technical point of view and when you're studying tremolo and trying to get it nice and even you should be trying to think of the thumb as just another one of the fingers and you're shooting for that nice even volume from all of them. One other thing is that what you want to make sure you're avoiding is any type of gap between any of the four notes. The most common gap from my understanding and teaching a lot of students how to do tremolo is there seems to be a gap between when the thumb plays and when the ring finger plays, which is this part here. So what you can do if you're having trouble there, and it doesn't matter if it's between those two fingers, you can apply the same principle anywhere, is to use one as a dot and the other one undotted, so you have this kind of thing. So there, I'm playing the thumb and annular much quicker than I am playing middle and index, so the gap between these two, P and A, is much quicker. And that can help you to remove any gaps between two fingers. As I said before, it's usually there's a gap between thumb and annular. The last thing I'm going to mention is that you don't strictly have to use P-A-M-I in that order. Some people use P-I-M-A and I've actually heard, but I've never seen, but I have heard that some people use I-M-I or M-I-M. -M. I've tried that, I couldn't get it, uh, you know, I think maybe my technique's not quite up to, to scratch, but I have heard of some people doing that, so I'm teaching you the way that I do it, which is, I think, the most common way, P-A-M-I. I strongly suggest that you download the tabs for this. The, the tabs are available all over the internet for Recuerdos de la Alhambra. Uh, I'll also be providing tabs that show you exactly how I play it with my fingerings and that. The way I do it is slightly different to some people's approaches. Uh, so if you want to follow along with me exactly, click on the link below and you can download the tabs from my website. If you want the tabs and sheet music, you can pay a small fee for that and you can download that. Or you can leave a comment below in the descriptions with your email address and I'll email out the tabs to you. Thank you. 
this. It starts off with an A minor chord, open A, and first finger on the 2nd fret of the D string, 3rd finger 5th fret on the G string, 4th finger 5th fret on the B string. The bass is going to go like this. Okay, so that's 5, 4, 3, 4, and you're going to be doing of the B string in between each of those notes like this. Then we're going to change chord. Because there, my 4th finger is moved to the 4th fret on the G string. This stays there. And my 2nd finger is on the 3rd fret of the B string. And I'm going to do this in the bass. And I'm going to be tremoloing on the 3rd fret of the B string. So we have Then I do my A minor like this you, know, you can do it like that if you want to But I do it like this so that I can just slide my finger here There I'm using a guide finger principle Second finger goes to the first fret on the B string Fourth finger, second fret G string Third finger, second fret D string Bass So that's five that second chord. So it's kind of going from here, there, there, back to there, and then back to the first chord. Then you're going to do the first chord two times around like this. Okay, so that's five, four, three, four, three, four, and then do it again. Five, four, three, four, but then here, to this. Right, so that's my fourth finger on the third fret of the B string, first finger on the first fret of the first string, bass is second string, third string, and I'm tremoloing on the first string like this. Then I'm going to do a bar at the third fret. I bar five strings here, and my fourth finger guides along to the 5th fret on the B string and I've got my 3rd finger on the 5th fret of the D string and the bass is doing this so it's 5, 4, 2, 4 and you're tremoloing on the 1st string like this then you go back to that chord same way then we're going to a C major chord so there we have 3rd finger on the 3rd fret of the A string, 1st finger, 1st fret, B string, and we're doing this in the bass. Okay, so that's 5, 3, 2, 3, tremolo on the 1st string. Then back to that chord, and then back to this chord. And then do that again. Okay, so I'll take it from the beginning. transfer that chord to the 8th fret and we're going to do the same picking pattern then we're moving to this so I'll do that again leave this finger here 
there what I've done is I've moved my second finger to the eighth fret on the B string and I'm sort of doing a bar lightly or a hinge bar kind of on the seventh fret of the first string. So we've got this. Then we're moving to a bar chord like this. It's not technically a bar because you don't have to bar it, but you could. But your first finger should be on the 8th fret of the A string. And these three fingers are on the 10th frets of the D string, G string and B string. We've got this. Then switch. That's the bass line and we're tremoloing on the B string. to this open D and 10th fret on the G string in the bass and we're tremoloing on the 12th fret of the B string so that whole sequence sounds like this then we're doing a half bar or a bar across four strings at the 9th fret we've got this our second finger is on the 10th fret of the B string and in the bass we're doing an E, open E and then to the 9th fret on the D string that quick little hammer pull off so it's two times on the 10th fret of the B string then hammer to the 12th, pull off to the 10th then we release the second finger so that's from G to D, G to D, and the tremolo is occurring on the 9th fret of the B string. Then we have this. So there in the bass we have open E, 12th fret on the D string, and then 9th fret on the G string like this. And then back, and the tremolo is on the B string 9th fret. So if we take it from here, okay, I'm going to do that complete. section. We have open A, 11th fret on the D string, 9th fret on the G string like this. 4th finger is on the 11th fret of the B string just for the first two beats and then it goes to the 10th fret on the B string like this. So we've got here. this chord. Third finger on the 9th fret of the 6th string, 1st finger 7th fret on the D string, 4th finger 9th fret on the G string, 2nd finger 8th fret on the B string, and we're doing this in the bass. And tremolo is on the B string. Then we're moving out to this, which is exactly like the first chord. 10th fret on the G string, 7th fret on the D string, that's the bass, and tremolo on the 10th fret of the B string. Going from this chord. So I leave this finger on. Then we've got this. So there we have a D in the bass and tremolo on the 8th fret of the B string. Then bass on the 9th fret of the G string, and we're going to do a similar trill to what we did up here, like this. So there we have. So it's twice on the 8th fret of the B string, and then the hammer pull off 
to the tenth fret, back to the eighth. Okay, I'll take it from here. Then we're moving to a D minor shape. There, it's like a bar, but you don't really have to bar. So first finger is on the fifth fret of the A string. Second finger, sixth fret, B string. And these two fingers on the seventh frets of the D and G strings. And the bass is doing this. It's going from G to D, G to D. So it's just after this. And then we've got this in the bass. And still tremolo on the sixth fret of the B string. series of open strings here. So the bass is doing this. That's open D, second fret on the G string, open B, back to the second fret on the G string, tremolo, open E. So from the D minor chord. Bass on the 4th fret of the G string, tremolo on the 3rd fret of the B string, then 4th finger comes off, 2nd fret on the G string is the bass, and stay with the same tremolo note. So from the D minor, then we have a bar at the 1st fret, keep this finger on. So in the bass we have 1st fret, 1st fret, 2nd fret, 1st fret, on the 6, 4, 3, 4. And the tremolo is happening on the 1st fret of the B string. Then the bass is G, D again, but we put our 4th finger onto the 3rd fret of the B string and tremolo that like this. to this chord. So it's the same principle there, we've got that quick little hammer on pull off. The bass is open E and then E on the D string and we're tremoloing the first fret on the B string like this. There, pick the first fret on the B string twice and then hammer to the third fret and pull off back to the first fret like this. And then we have this. First fret on the G string, second fret on the D string in the bass. So we're going from here. And tremoloing open B. So if I take it from the D minor. And then we have this in the bass. Open E, 4th, 3rd, 4th, 3rd, 4th from here. Then back to the beginning. Thanks very much. That's the end of the first tutorial. Remember, if you really want to play it similar to how I'm playing it with the same fingerings, I do suggest that you download my tabs. They're free. You can just download them by clicking on the link below. Or if you want the tabs with the sheet music, and that has the full score, so the music notation is running across the top. The tabs are underneath, you can also download that for a small fee. Also, if you want to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, there's some links down there as well, and you can see all the other gigs that I do all around the place. Mm -hmm.